Welcome to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I have uh, yet another outstanding guest. I've been so blessed to have so many wonderful guests. A friend, Jeff Cantor, the founder of the New Jersey Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Jeff. How are you? Thank you, Dr. Caldwell. Great to see you again. Well, it's good to, it's good to see you, and sometimes I, I, I use these shows as a way to connect with people I haven't talked to for in a while. So you're the founder of uh, the Veterans Chamber, but before we talk about that, I always like to find out who you are. Now, where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? And, and how did you get involved as, uh, in the military? Sure. So I grew up uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, it was a great, great uh, childhood there. Uh, but decided to leave Brooklyn to go to school in Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. uh, part of the SUNY system. So I went to school in Buffalo. And while I was there, I joined, uh, I joined the military, uh, ROTC. Mm. and. Um, at Canisius College and got commissioned and became an officer in the Army. I uh, did a couple of stints on active duty and, and spent some time in the reserves and deployed three times. Uh, and spent ultimately 32 years in the military and retired as a colonel in 2017. Wow, that's uh, what, what a great career and, and just wonderful, wonderful service. We're, we're blessed to have you. So now, so now, what was your career after that? So after the military, what did you do? So I, I did some time uh, in the pharmaceutical uh, industry. Uh, I worked in sales management mm -hmm. and leadership roles. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I uh, had advised Governor Murphy on some veterans issues. And when he became governor, he placed me at the, uh, to, to work on veterans economic development. So I uh, did that for the state for about a year um, and realized that really this is gonna take a full all hands on deck approach to start the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. So I left uh, the state to, to work with the chamber. Well, and, and um, um, as you know, I'm executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and, and we have a family business program, but we also have a Veterans Launching Ventures program, as you know, where for free we help veterans develop businesses and so on. And this year, because of Zoom, we're actually doing a national program this summer and we were doing research. Okay, let's find out. You know, every state must have a veterans chamber. Let's find out all these. Uh, and I realized there are only like four or five veteran state veteran chambers. And I, I, it, it raised. You know, I have great respect for you. And then I said, Wow, it's incredible what Jeff did. Why don't more states have a veterans chamber of commerce? It makes so much sense. It, it really does. And uh, I think some of the issues are. I, you know, there isn't a support network mm -hmm. in many states for uh, the formation of a veteran chamber. There needs to be one. There needs to be a veterans chamber in every state uh, and one at the federal level. Um, and and uh, it's just it's a lot of work to get it up off the ground and running and, and being successful. You know, uh, MJ Biz just uh, ranked the top uh, chambers in the state of New Jersey. And we've been in, in business for a little over a year yeah. now. We're ranked 11th. Wow, in the state. congratulations. Okay, congratulations. And you've been working hard at this, and I know there's been a lot of pushback. And, um, um, you know, people don't, and I'm learning this with family businesses, but with veteran businesses as well, people just don't realize how hard it is to run a, a, a small business and that the veteran businesses are an important category for the, uh, for the economy. Um, and so, so one of the things that uh, I remember early on talking to you about things like registering a business, and New Jersey was, was one of the few states where they forced veterans to actually pay to register a business. Is that, is, is that true? Yeah, that's true. New Jersey was one of the very few states. Uh, they charged $100 to register a certified the disabled veteran-owned business. But luckily, through the advocacy of the Veterans Chamber, we're able to get the state to defer those costs. So it's it's free for a disabled veteran business to register. It still costs $100 for a veteran business to uh, certify in the state of New Jersey, though. Well, and, and, and so what other hurdles are you are you finding? What other what other battles are you fighting on behalf of, of veterans in, in the state of New Jersey and nationally? So actually, it's, it's really interesting that you ask that question because the real reason why I started the chamber was because of, a, of an issue of a problem that I saw that wasn't getting fixed uh, that needed full-time attention. So back in 2015, the state of New Jersey passed a 3% set-aside law for disabled veteran-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what it means is that 3% of all contracts in the state of New Jersey are supposed to be set aside for the disabled veteran-owned business community. Mm -hmm. um, before we started the chamber, not $1 
had uh, or no, no contracts had been awarded to wow. any disabled veteran owned wow. businesses. And most uh, departments and authorities in the state of New Jersey didn't even know that, that the law existed. Mm -hmm. So uh, it took a lot of advocacy and, and a lot of uh, support. Uh, we brought on people. Francisco Cortez uh, is the president of the chamber. He's been working very, very diligently. We have a number of vice presidents that are working diligently. And what we're doing now is really holding the state accountable for enforcing the law uh, to set aside those uh, disabled veteran business set-asides. Well, and, and, and um, I mean, that should be such a no-brainer uh, but I think all federal businesses, I think, and I know you're working probably to really say, why, why don't we have a, a set aside for all veteran businesses? Is there, do you think there's a possibility of having, having that? So right now, uh, I don't see that in the future. I, uh, not too many states have a veteran-owned business set aside. Um, they, most states do have a disabled veteran business set aside. What we're trying to get passed in the state of New Jersey is a veteran price preference law. Mm -hmm. um, it's already been introduced in the uh, state Senate uh, as past committee and was before budget appropriations. But uh, as you know, with COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, everything got put on hold. So the, uh, the companion bill was just passed in the assembly. Um, so S-1866 and a uh, 42, uh, 4042 uh, are the uh, the bills for the veterans price preference law that we're trying to get passed. Into Interesting. So that's uh, now, now registering. Now I know, and, and I have a consulting firm is registered as a minority business and registered as a women owned business. Now, is there, a, is there a New Jersey veteran business certification or is it, um, or, or um, is there a particular certification for veteran businesses? So there is, yeah. So okay. as you just had indicated, there's a minority-owned business, a women-owned business, a small business enterprise, uh, a veteran-owned business, and a disabled veteran-owned business certification okay. in the state. Excellent. So as you know, and, and I wrote an article in, in um, NJ Biz, you know, the title, Keep the Cash Home. And one of the things that I'm advocating for is this idea of just public, you don't have to force them, but publicly reporting on your website. Every public agency that receives state money, how much they're spending on those certifications, veteran certified businesses, minority certified, women certified businesses, small certified businesses. And in the example in the article, I talk about Camden Public Schools, Jersey City Public Schools, and Newark Public Schools that have a $2.1 billion budget. If they spent just 5% for busing and food service and uh, uh, teacher training, that's $105 million staying in those businesses in New Jersey for three school districts. Um, and I know you've, you've supported that. You know, and, and you've been a big, big advocate behind the scenes. How do we make that happen? Because it's a no-brainer. It's no additional taxes. It's just keeping the money home in New Jersey. Do you think that's, that's possible? Yeah, it's, it's a brilliant idea, and I, I would love to see that come to light. Um, so one of the things that we do with the, in the Veterans Chamber, and you know, we're not in this alone, right? Mm, right so right. you have the African-American Chamber of Commerce run by John Harmon. John Harmon you yep. have the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce run by uh, uh, Carlos Medina mm -hmm. and uh, Luis okay. de la Hoz. And you know, we're working together with them because we don't want it just, you know, veterans. We want more money to be spent with minorities, right. more money to be spent with women, more money to be spent with Latinos, and more money to be spent with veterans because we're not getting our fair share of the economic pie that's available to, to people in, in the state. And, um, you know, I know Hester Agadosi, who's the chief diversity officer, was working diligently to try and implement something like that where there's transparency in the dollar and percent spends uh, for minority and, and disabled veteran businesses you know it's very interesting you take a look at new york state mm -hmm. new york state has implemented this they have a six percent goal for uh disabled veteran businesses mm -hmm. and they also require every single department in the state to have an annual plan on how they plan to meet their six percent goals mm -hmm. and then in that plan they publish data uh percent spends and dollar spends for every single department and authority on how they're doing towards their SDBOB goals. So they take it very, very seriously in, in New York. We're hoping that New Jersey follows suit and takes it seriously as well. Well, I mean, my hope is this crisis is really waking people up that this is a small business country and that anything that we can do to spend money locally um, is, is so important for, for maintaining the economy. And, you know, in the, in, in the article, I talk about this, the cyclical problem of, of small businesses can't 
generate the revenue to pay taxes so that the government has money to support small businesses. So you have this cyclical problem. And so the only way to do that is to take money that's going to be spent anyway and make sure that it's spent, spent at home. So now how do you, how does the, uh, yeah, it's amazing that you've been able to get, make that organization, um, you know, one of the top chambers in New Jersey. How do you, how do you generate revenue? So a couple of ways. So right now, uh, dues are part of it. So mm -hmm. to join the dues, but what we do is to make it easier on veteran businesses uh, to get started, we waive the fees for the first mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the other way we bring in revenue is through sponsorships. Mm -hmm. uh, people sponsor events. Uh, so that's really the main revenue source are, are sponsorships and um, and the revenue for uh, membership. Are you finding that companies are, are starting to be even more sensitive to the importance of supporting veteran businesses? I believe so. I think a lot of private sector companies are. Uh, you know, you take a look at Johnson & Johnson, for example. They do a wonderful job supporting veteran small businesses. Uh, they have a great program. In fact, they have a dedicated person, John Perez, mm -hmm. who is the head of their veteran and military affairs department who looks solely at supporting the veterans community, including mm -hmm. veteran businesses. Well, see, and that's, um, you know, that's, that's so, so important. Uh, Francisco Cortez and I sit on this Restart and Recovery Commission with uh, you know, Governor Murphy's uh, commission on the Main Street. You know, and so, and he's he's had some great comments, and and we're really trying to, to, to push this idea of, uh, of of supporting veteran businesses. And as you and I have talked, that uh, there should be no resistance. You know, there's some people who are resistant to women in minority business certifications and other things, and those those dinosaurs are, are out there. But nobody can be against veteran support, supporting veteran businesses. Um, and I did not have the opportunity to, to, to serve, but, but through this, I've really started to see some things, to be honest, Jeff, that alarm me about the veteran world. It seems like we're not treating veterans as well as we should in this country. It just seems that there's so many more services, health care, you know, job support, and other things. And I know you're trying to do things to improve that. Uh, do, you see a, do you see that it's improving? Uh, you know, we're making granular uh progress you know right now it's it's tough because you know everybody to your point everybody loves veterans right yeah. we all thank them for their service and you know we're, we're all thankful that they're here but the true way to thank a veteran is to hire a veteran mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. procure with a veteran mm -hmm. is to provide economic opportunities for veterans that's the way to truly support the veterans community and that's what we're hoping to do uh, both through legislation and through interaction with the public and private sectors. Okay, we're going to pick up on that in a, in a minute. We're going to take a, a short commercial break, and I'll come back with Jeff Cantor, the founder of the New Jersey Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind-the-scenes footage, previews, and more. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week. So when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat. Like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? 
According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Welcome back to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. I have uh, Jeff Cantor, the CEO of the New Jersey Veterans uh, Chamber. Um, thanks again, uh, Jeff. We've had a great conversation at the first part of the show. Now, we were talking about how people can best support veterans, and you were saying that, that hiring them. Um, um, say a little more about that. So, you know, it's always good to thank a veteran, but the, the way to truly support them is if you have a big company, what can you do to buy from a veteran business? You know, there are veterans that have, that sell IT equipment, that do cyber security, that do marketing and advertising, that do construction, they do uh, staffing services. Uh, there's so many different industries that veterans uh, are part of. And the best way to really support the veterans community is to say, hey, you know what? If I'm gonna buy a new IT network, I'm gonna buy it from a veteran business. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to redo my parking lot, I'm gonna hire a veteran business to do it. If I need to uh, come up with a new advertising campaign or marketing campaign, I need to have a veteran business do that. That's the best way to support veterans. Now, does the chamber do any kind of career training or are there groups that do career training specifically for uh, uh, you know, we know we're both friends with Mike Ferraro, um, who was just on my show. Are there particular training programs for, uh, for, for veterans who may have, you know, been unemployed for a while? Yeah, so we, we do help to try and find veterans meaningful employment. Um, in fact, we're, we're working with uh, NJIT right now on a program for pre-apprenticeships for advanced manufacturing uh, to try and help veterans break into that uh, very high lucrative and high paying jobs um, you know, around the state. You know, I was talking to New Jersey MEP, which is um, sort of like the, the go-to for advanced manufacturing in the state of New Jersey, and they have over 200 jobs that go uh, unfilled. Wow. Because wow. They're, people don't have the baseline now to get into those high skilled, high tech jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and now here's an opportunity to, to move forward and try and do a pre-apprenticeship and then an apprenticeship and then get these really high paying jobs. Well, I, you know, Mike Seitel, who I've had on my show, who runs uh, Norwalt uh, Design, they develop these high, high speed machines, uh, who's been very active in, in, in manufacturing, was saying that there are actually a lot of jobs, they're having trouble finding people who are really good with their hands. That you know, a lot of the young people, a lot of the vocational programs used to train young people, but now those vocational are pre-Ivy League programs. And that there are some opportunities for people that are just naturally mechanically gifted. He also has some rocket science jobs as well. But um, you know, maybe there's a way that we can kind of connect you with some of those folks because they are, 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 are really looking for people who come out of the military who have those kinds of skills. And so I don't know if you've seen people placed in manufacturing firms or, uh, or, or, or organizations like that. Well, you know, it's interesting. The whole, uh, the whole situation that's going on with China right now between COVID-19 and the whole tariff situation, mm -hmm. I think many companies are looking at ways to bring manufacturing back to our shores. Yep. Uh, and there's, there's a great need for people in these advanced manufacturing roles. And it's not manufacturing like, you know, we used to think and we used to see on the, on the, you know, automated lines. It's not like that anymore. Now it's really high tech. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to code. You need to be able mm -hmm. to work computers, CNC routers. Uh, it's really, really high tech. Yep. And, um, you know, people are getting paid uh, a, a nice amount of money for it. 
the uh, yeah, you're right, and there, there are going to be more and more of those jobs. But there are also, and I, it was really a learning for me, that there actually are a lot of the, the old style jobs too. Um, in fact, somebody was saying there are 20,000 uh, New Jersey manufacturing jobs openings in New Jersey, believe it or not. And so, uh, um, but, but, but we find like everything else, there's a disconnect. The, you know, the information that there, there's information out there, and that's kind of our role at a, as a university to try to connect with that. And so, um, you, know, the, the, you know, one of the things that concerns me a lot is this whole veteran homeless problem. You know, that so many veterans are homeless, a lot of it is because of PTSD and other things. And so, um, yeah, what's your sense of that? I mean, how do we, is there any thoughts on what we can do about that veteran homeless problem? You know, it's, it's a really great question because I personally think that a lot of the issues uh, as it relates to veteran homelessness is because veterans don't often have a way to uh, produce income. Right. They don't have a way to provide for their families. Mm -hmm. They don't have a way to show their value and net worth because they don't have meaningful employment. I think it comes back to the whole economic piece of it, where if you provide a way forward, if you hire a veteran, if you procure with a veteran, if you offer, uh, if you offer to buy your equipment and, and construction needs through a veteran business, mm -hmm. uh, you will do so much to help veterans homelessness because if, if they're economically independent, right. they have a way forward. You know, when they feel destitute, if they feel like there's no hope, that they can't provide for their family or they can't make any money, then, you know, there, there's there's outcomes to that, negative outcomes. So, you know, I think it comes back to economics. Well, that's a great that, that's a great point. It really is about jobs. It, it, it really is about jobs. And, and uh, so I, I have I founded a nonprofit, the, the Dale Caldwell Foundation, and, and our focus is really kind of ending systemic poverty. And what what we want to do is is really work with the challenge is that so much of the job training has been supply-based job training that they, people are paid to create, to train people for jobs that don't exist. And so we're saying, why not go to businesses who need jobs and train people? But, but part of the challenge is you really have to stay with them on a weekly basis, right? And most programs don't do that. You know, that the people get, the veterans get a job and they say, okay, you have the job, now you're going to be fine. But you really have to check in with them. Are there any programs that you know of that do that, that they train them, they help them get a job, but, uh, but really monitor? I don't know that many programs. Are, are there any that come to mind? There's very, very few. I think one that comes to mind is a nonprofit called NPower. Okay. Uh, they repurpose veterans in IT and uh, tech jobs, cyber jobs, um, and they provide a course of instruction, then they provide a, uh, a paid internship, so they're watching them all the time, they're helping them through it, and then they put them in, in, vacant, in vacancies around, uh, you know, around New York and New Jersey, making really, really good money. So that's the only one that I know of offhand, mm -hmm. okay. uh, but there are very few and far between, to, to your point, it, there definitely is a need there. Yeah, and that, that really needs to be funded, because you really need to handhold folks through, through the process. Um, so so let, let's let's talk about some of the national. I know that you're focused on New Jersey. You you know it's, there's enough to do with New Jersey, but you said there are a couple of national things you're looking at. Yeah. So one of the things we're doing right now. So Senator Booker's office has been very very supportive of of the veterans community, and we're working with his staff. Right now, uh, New Jersey gets a lot of money through the U.S. Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. and, and every time money comes down from the U.S. DOT to the state, uh, a portion of that money has to be spent with DBEs, uh, which are known as uh, disadvantaged business uh, enterprises. Right. The issue with that is that is specifically um, race and gender based. Mm. Um, so veterans do not qualify for any DBE spending. Mm, interesting. So uh, we were looking to either get uh, veterans and disabled veterans added to the definition of a DBE or have a new um, category where if the money comes down from the u.s uh from the federal government to the state mm -hmm. that a proponent of that money also be spent with disabled veteran businesses or veteran owned businesses which would be a natural it just makes makes perfect sense because they, I, again those are those are our folks that are dealing with disadvantage so just by the very very nature of it um and so uh, one of the things that uh you know we're, we're, we've gone through this crazy COVID crisis and uh, um, and, and so many businesses, veteran and others, have been struggling. 
I know you've been at working with some businesses to help them with PPP loans and other things. Tell, tell about that, that program. Yeah, so the Economic Development Authority in New Jersey has uh, saw early on that they needed support from diverse communities. Mm -hmm. So the African American Chamber, the Hispanic Chamber, the Veterans Chamber uh, signed a contract with EDA to support businesses. And we support business regardless of veteran status mm -hmm. um, to help them with their disaster loan applications and the payroll protection program. And it's been working out well. Uh, we've, we've been able to outreach to a lot of businesses. Most of them were veteran uh, businesses that we helped out, but there were many non-veteran businesses as well. Um, and so the EIDL, the, the issue I think with the EIDL loans, which is the Economic Impact Disaster Loans, right, right. was that once they, uh, the business owner uh, submitted the application, they didn't hear anything. So they didn't know if they were approved, if they were going to get any money. So there's a long delay just because of the sheer volume of the number of businesses that were applying for these disaster loans. Right. Ultimately, uh, uh, SBA has been able to catch up, the Small Business Administration has been able to catch up with a lot of these loans uh, and they've started to, to issue these loans. And the PPP program has been great because 75% of any of that money can be forgiven as a grant right. uh, as long as you use it for, for payroll purposes. So it's, it's really uh, an advantageous program. And the EDA has done really a remarkable job in New Jersey here. Um, they, they had two phases of support for, for small businesses. The first one, they had $10 million uh, mm -hmm. that they were giving out for $5,000 grants. Right. That money was gone within an hour. Right. That's, exactly. that's the demand <laughs> exactly. that, that they saw. Right. They realized the demand was so great that they uh, had a phase two uh, just Monday, this past Monday, mm -hmm. and um, they had $45 million worth of additional business, uh, money to give out to small businesses. The application was not that hard. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty straightforward. So I think uh, the program is going to be working. We'll, we'll have yet to see how phase two is going to go. Mm -hmm. But so far, it looks very, very promising. And I think there's money for those that are watching. There's money it's still left in the account. So they're, they're, they're accepting applications. That's what Tim Sullivan was saying. Um, that's, that's exactly right. Now, the EIDL loans, uh, right now, the only people who can qualify for the disaster loans for SBA are agricultural-based mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. Um, there are still PPP monies available, so you can still apply as long as you have had a payroll. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, uh, EDA has money available uh, at the local level as well. Well, we're, we're, uh, we're at the uh, end of the show. Uh, the one final thought I, I um, or, or really question, is there any way, so people are going to start going back to restaurants soon. They're going to start to go there. Is there any way the chamber could have, and you may have this already, something that restaurants can stick in their window to say, member of the Veterans Chamber of Commerce, so that people who are looking to spend their money can, can spend it with a veteran business? Do you have something like that already? We do. We have a badge uh, that okay. we give to members that say that they're a proud member of the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. A nice badge that says the New Jersey State Veterans Chamber of Commerce on there. So anybody who's wanting to join any restaurant, any type of business, you don't have to be a veteran to join uh, to support the veterans community. Uh, you will get that uh, and you can proudly display it so people know that you are a veteran friendly uh, business. With that, so uh, what we'll end there, but when you go to restaurants, look for the Veterans Chamber of Commerce symbol. And Jeff, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm looking forward to continue to work with you out there to try to change, change the world on behalf of, of veteran businesses. So, so take care and um, thanks for watching Family Business World. We will see you next week.